Sensory photography is photography made accessible to those without sight. So uh, it's literally photography with the other senses. Sensory photography refers to both the taking of photographs and also the experience of photography. So why sensory photography? Why would a blind person want to take a photograph? Well, generally speaking, my answer to that is why not? Because photography, although people often think of it purely as a visual medium, as a way to create something that is visual, that's not actually why most people take photographs. They take photographs as an act of communication, to, com to commemorate something, to celebrate an aspect of their life, to share something that they've created or done, um, and then to be able to relive those moments later on through those photographs. And I think it's important that people are not excluded from that whole area of communication because they have uh, a visual impairment. There isn't just one special magic technique that enables someone who's blind or partially sighted to take a photograph. What we like to do is encourage people to experiment with different techniques and find a way that suits them and allows them to take photographs the way that they want to. We don't use any special equipment either. For example, we might use a perfectly normal digital point-and-shoot camera like this and then just make some small customizations to make it possible for someone who's blind to navigate the controls confidently. Here we've just added a small tactile sticker um, so that whoever's using it can tell just by touch which setting they're currently using. In order to use cameras like this to take photographs, some photographers might choose to put the camera onto their forehead so that they are always absolutely certain which way the camera is pointing and know that whatever they can sense is in front of them or whatever they've felt with their hands um, or heard will be what's captured in the frame. Photographers can learn very quickly how much of what is in front of them is captured at different distances by their camera. And some partially sighted photographers will use their cane to judge distance so they can always be sure they're getting exactly the frame they want. Others prefer, particularly with portraits, to engage with the subject, perhaps through conversation um, or simply by exploring it before stepping back and taking the photograph so that they can be very clear um, about what they're capturing. The other side of sensory photography is how those photographs can then be made accessible to the blind and partially sighted people who took them or to other blind and partially sighted people. To exhibit photographs, PhotoVoice creates completely accessible exhibitions, um, accessible to those who are blind and partially sighted but also to sighted people. So alongside photographs that are there as prints, we have the tactile versions. We would have audio descriptions on MP3 players that provide a guide for people to follow as they walk around the space. And we would even have a tactile map which would also be accompanied by an audio guide. Many people who are blind and partially sighted prefer simply to share their photographs with friends and family. Um, and through a discussion with them and a description from those that can actually see the finished product, they'll know they got what they wanted, that it's conveying what they want, and they'll still be reliving the moment that was captured by that photograph. I have to say, Jaime was very confident from the beginning. At first he thought it was funny that he was being asked to participate, but at the same time he was at no point nervous and was very willing uh, to jump in with both feet first and to enjoy the experience.